Welcome back. Today I'm going to start putting the coolant lines through the car. I need to get the fuel pump assembly, these coolant lines and the battery tray in place so I can map out the routing for the brake lines. First up, I need to blow the lines through and make sure there's no debris or dust inside the pipes. Then I need to get some Jubilee clips on the pump exit. I need to insulate the coolant pipes where it runs along the side of the passenger seat and down in the footwell. Next I can get the fuel pump, swirl pot and filter installed in the car. I'm going to trim the bolts on the underside and I will install the fuel line from the filter to the pump. I have a 12mm to 8mm adapter for the fuel feed. I just need some 12mm fuel line. The rest of the pipes can be fitted once this is in the car. Fuel setup and battery tray in position. It now means I can figure out the routing of the rear brake lines. I should have everything I need for the brake lines. I am just waiting on one more UNF fitting for the hydraulic handbrake. I have a proportioning valve, two Y splits, some UNF fittings for the proportioning valve and the hydraulic handbrake. I have all of the metric fittings I need to go into the Subaru standard brake fittings on all four corners. I will be using 3 16 copper nickel pipe. This pipe bender should do up to 180 degree bends. The next job is to install this Y split. The proportioning valve out will come into this line. And this is where the pipe splits for the left and right rear wheels. Next I'm going to make the mount that will hold the bias valve. I have had a good look under the car for the best position for the brake line to come out and it's there. What I need to do now is drill this out so I can fit a brake union through it.
In order to figure out the length of the brake pipe, I will run this cord in the route it's going to take and this should give me the rough length. Having started this route, I've decided to change it. It makes much more sense to curl around the back of the roll cage, come around the back of the battery and straight down. Same with the near side, I can just go under the fuel pump. I've had to make sure the pipe is low enough underneath the fuel system mount. I will insulate the vulnerable areas with some rubber pipe. I also need to sleeve the area that goes through the floor pan. It clears the pipe nicely around the back and on the underside. I have also checked that it clears the covers. I won't shape the back end of the pipes until I put the rear subframe on. This will allow me to know how much clearance I have. Next I'm going to finish off the welding on the shifter. This means I can give it a clean up and get it bolted on the car and I can leave it in. As I do this up, I want to check I don't make it too tight. I don't want too much resistance and for the lever not to return fully.
With most of the parts in that run down the centre of the tunnel, I can now plan exactly where the brake line is going to go from the bias valve to the handbrake and up through the front through the bulkhead. Next I need to wind these adapters into my bias valve. I bought these especially from Torx UK. They have a longer thread than the fittings that came with the bias valve. Also it converts it to M10 by 1. I think I've gone and buggered this valve guys and gals. The inlet went in fine with PTFE tape. However, the outlet, I tried to wind it in first and take it out just to clear the thread slightly. As I took this union out, it actually ripped the threads out of the body. I wound it back in fully with PTFE tape, but as you can probably see, it's gone in on an angle now. It's a simple fix. Torx UK actually have this exact same valve body. It has come supplied with the adapter with a male 10x1 fitting. This means I can make the line with a female and wind it straight on. The good thing about replacing it like for like is I can use the existing bracket I have already made to mount it in the car. Next I can work on the line that goes from the master cylinder to the hydraulic handbrake. <laughs> With this union nipped up, I can now try and mould the pipe where I want it to go. I now need to see how much length I have to make up on the inside of the car. For those of you with a keen eye may have noticed I have made a mistake already with the brake system. Up till this point I have been using single flares which looks something like this. To demonstrate why you should not use single flares in any brake system I will give you a quick demonstration. Imagine this is my car. This is a corner and that is a cliff. When I was checking what fittings I need for the replacement bias valve, I was looking into the type of flares. I had known this previously, but I just overlooked it. There are two operations for a double flare. These are used on brake systems, so never use a single flare. Unfortunately, the lines I've already put in and spent a while getting right need to come out. Well, I will check back in once I've put the correct flares on these pipes. I finished off writing my wrongs for the rear brake lines last night. I have also secured the line down the tunnel. Next I'll get the lines in for the front brakes. one pipe with double flared ends.
I'll use the standard bracket for the caliper lines. However, the original line actually runs through the chassis leg. To bend this with copper nickel, it's not ideal. Instead, I'm going to drill a small hole there so I can get a nice straight line up through this bracket. As with the rear brake line split, I'm going to make the lines that go to each of the front wheels the same length. The lines in the engine bay are basically in place. I won't fasten them in until I get some insulation to protect some of the vulnerable areas that run close to the body shell. Once we have them protected, then I can figure out exactly where they're going to sit. In order to complete the brake lines, I need the bias valve. Then I can run a line from the back of the handbrake into the valve, which will go out to the back brakes. Thanks for watching another episode, like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next week.